Hey everyone, a few of you asked me to kind of review or do a flip through of this book and I really wanted to do it now before I leave on vacation, before I start the December daily project and also, you know, we're, it's getting close to the holiday season so some of you may want to gift this or, you know, put it on your wish list or something. So I wanted to this book is huge. It's 300 pages and there is no way that I can flip through all of it. But um, we're going to start and I'm just going to kind of talk through my impressions as I flip through it. So hopefully you can, you know, I don't know, either listen to me or mute this and focus on the images. Um, let's actually take a moment to look at the contents. So this is a really, really heavy, you know, there's a lot of text here. There are also a lot of illustrations and diagrams and I think everything is well uh, presented and there are very clear instructions and examples, but it is a lot of text. So just be mindful of that. If you're the kind of person that really enjoys to flip through art books and just enjoy the beautiful artwork, then this is probably not the book for you. Also, what I'm finding frustrating as I'm flipping through it and really loving the whole concept of it is that I wouldn't be able to take this with me, or at least I wouldn't want to really carry this thing uh, with me when I'm out exploring just uh, flipping through it really makes me want to observe and study my surrounding. I do live in the countryside, uh, even though I think a lot of the principles that he talks about, as, at least in the first pages that I've been flipping through, uh, can be applied also to more of an urban landscape as opposed to, you know, being out in nature. But definitely for me, I am surrounded by nature and I could definitely go out and explore. So if you go out with a tablet, I would definitely consider getting this on like the Kindle app or something like that. So you could actually reference this as you're uh, outside doing studies. All these ideas like one poppy, 12 hours, you know, I can imagine doing that with a flower in my garden and actually also if you're living in a city in a small apartment, you could buy a flower and just observe it for, you know, a day or a few days. Um, there's a lot here, a lot of great ideas and also for me, which I tend to be impatient, I don't paint anything that is very like hyper realistic or botanical illustrations or anything like that but there's enough here you know the the whole idea of being curious and observing and doing studies for me also having like a page like this in a sketchbook or i don't know something like this that would be enjoyable enough just to have that even if that's all there is even if that study or observation of i don't know like a mushroom or something will not translate to a future um, piece of finished what you would call finished artwork that i could frame and hang on the wall i would be okay with that because for me it's about the process it's about the enjoyment of sketching, playing with watercolors, and also observing my surroundings. As fun as it is to just sit around and, you know, do, I don't know, abstract with watercolors, there's definitely a lot to be said about actually painting real things from your world, being inspired, and that is something that really, really appealed to me. Um, of course, there's also, I'm guessing, a lot of real um, tips on how to paint certain things. So this is the materials section, journal, 
always fun. Skechers pocket box. And colors, always fun, choosing watercolors. Then we have some drawing. Again, this book is huge. What I found interesting is, I think there was, so hopefully this is not too hectic for you and you can get an idea of how this book looks. There's so much here, you know, shadows, colors, triads, mixing colors, different palettes, matching colors, how to show depth. It looks very, very, you know, meaty. There's a lot here, which I do appreciate. Uh, I don't like books that, you know, that are just beautiful to look through, but then you, as an artist, you don't feel like you get enough out of them, if that makes sense. And this one is like the opposite. I think the only um, problem again, like for me, I would like to have it with me. But of course I could go outside to my garden with this book and just sit and sketch something and have it near me as a reference. So there is here sketching with markers, sketching with a ballpoint pen, so different uh, media. It's not just if you're a watercolor artist. He touches uh, several different mediums here and you also get examples. So this is watercolor pencil and this is colored pencil uh, drawing an iris. Watercolor timing, applying watercolors, so so much. Gouache, gouache on white paper, how to draw animals. Okay, so here I guess we're going into the real itty bitty greedy details. So we really have step by step of a ladybug, insects, really interesting, like iridescence, that's really interesting, butterflies, wings, I'm sorry if I'm going fast, I don't want this to be, you know, a half hour long book um, video but I want to show you as much as I can salamanders frogs and toads I admit it's not like reptiles and frogs and toads are not something that <laughs> I'm really um, keen on painting but I think uh, a lot of these things like nature flowers certain animals would be fun to uh, study again, without necessarily having it end up as a finished, I don't know, piece of work that I can frame. Hawk, game, anatomy, okay, that's, that's intense stuff. <laughs> Simplifying major muscle groups, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Simplifying <laughs> is what I want. Deer, okay, so this is just like a lot of animals. Then we have wildflowers. So I think it really does cover, you know, nature. Solutions and shortcuts. <laughs> That's always a good one. <laughs> Drawing dense clumps of flowers. I really, you know, the, the headlines really speak to me because I recognize him addressing common issues. I don't know this book well enough to actually tell you if he does a good job in helping us <laughs> as struggling artists figure it out. Mushrooms, I do love mushrooms. It's such a fun plant, like with a, a, such an interesting shape. How to draw, draw trees near and far, that's quite uh you know something that i do struggle with and this is something i'll definitely get into now his style tends to be more realistic than my personal style but i think if you have a good base then it's easier to kind of simplify things and tweak it 
to fit one's own personal style. But you know, the, the theory, the base needs to be there. And while I completely agree that, you know, it's practice, 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 practicing without knowing the foundations and the rules and the theory is a little bit pointless. I, I don't remember who mentioned this as such a great example. If you have, okay, I'll keep flipping so you can see more pages, but let's say you wanna learn how to play guitar. If someone gave you a guitar and that was it, would you be able to kind of figure it all out by yourself? I don't think, I think most people would not be able to do that. You need some guidance, you need some theory, some rules, something. So yeah, I think actually we did a good job. We, me, I did a good job in <laughs> showing you most of it, crashing waves and watercolors, waves at the beach, ocean waves, drawing water, mountain landscape. So, you know, I'm kind of, this is just a quick flip through and the fact that there's an, you know, a page about pretty much everything in nature doesn't mean that, you know, this book has all the answers, but I am curious to play with it and read it more carefully and uh, try to apply uh, some of these ideas and laws and concepts into my artwork. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you uh, decide if this book is for you or not. And I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.